Come on, who's excited to be in church today? Is anybody? Come on. What a good day. What a good day already. I'm so excited. That's right. I'm about that excited right there. My name is Elliot. My wife Tiffany and I have the great privilege of pastoring this group of people called Lifeline Church. Can we give it up for everybody who's here for the very first time? Uh, Come on, let's give it up for them. Taking a step of faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And everybody online, we love you. God bless you. So grateful for the technology that we have to be able to share this day with you. We've got some notes that probably got handed out to you on your way in, inside of your bulletin. There's some message notes in there that you could follow along with. That's what your bulletin looks like. See that right there? That's what it, that's what it is. In case you didn't understand what I'm talking about, there it is. That's a bulletin note. It's right in there. Also, we have an app called the, the Version Bible app that you can download that, find us under the events tab, find Lifeline Church, and you can follow along with all of the notes that we have just like that. I got a couple updates for you before we get started here. Um, in two weeks, in two weeks, everybody say two weeks. weeks. It's going to be January 1st, and that means it's going to be the very first Sunday of 2023. Come on, who's excited for 2023? That was like some of you. Some of you were excited about it, but let me tell you why you should be excited about it, because 2023 could be the best year of your life if it's the best year of your life spiritually. If you choose to go all in with Jesus, choose to go all in with the Lord, I'm telling you, that will be the best year of your life. If you go all in spiritually, your whole life will will turn around and be all that much better. Amen, everybody? So that's in two weeks from now. Now, next week, Sunday, we're not having church. Oh, what? No church? What? But don't worry. Don't freak out because it's Christmas morning, and I want you to stay in your pajamas with your family. Go ahead. Have fun with that. But we are having a big service on the Saturday right before, okay? The Christmas Eve service is going to be happening the night before. That's this Saturday coming up at 4 p.m. Everyone say 4 p.m.? Everyone say Saturday. Bring your friends, bring your family. We have really dialed in something so that your, your friends and the, your family that you bring, it could just be a life-giving experience for them. And there's a lot of people who would come to a Christmas Eve service if you just invited them. If you invited them, they would come, and they might come to check a, a box off. They might come to check a little, you know, a little, oh, I just did it. I went and I did my church for Christmas. But they're coming for, to check a box. They might get life change permanently because they're here. So take those cards that are in the seat that you sat in. There's little tiny cards right there that you can hand out to people, and the little QR code goes to a landing page where they can get to know like what the series is going to be about. We put a lot of energy into that so that any visitors that you invite would be well equipped. Amen, everybody? It's going to be fun. So we've got Refresh series coming up January 1st, and we've got Christmas Eve coming up this Saturday. Who's ready to conclude this series called Ghosts of Christmas Past? Anybody been enjoying this? Is this helpful to anybody? Has this been good? I'm glad. 14 of you were like, yes, yes, it was really good for me. So we're going to conclude it up with this this last uh, message called Labels, Labels, or more specifically, Changing Labels. Changing labels. Uh, We've been talking about things all month long that, hmm, let me try and explain it to you in a simple way. Ghosts of Christmas past means there's some things from your past that have been holding you back, things that have been weighing you down, things that have been hurting you. Uh, Coming into this season, it could be a very sad season. It could be a very difficult season for a lot of people. That's why we called this series The Ghosts of Christmas Past, and the last thing that we want to break off, the last ghost that we're going to like, get out of here, is called a label, a label. How many of you know that words have an incredible ability to, uh, they have power. Words have power. Words have the power to create, to motivate, to encourage, and shape. Words are very powerful. Words are very powerful. How many of you know that the power of words can also have the power to hurt, to wound, discourage, and destroy? Yeah, words can be very powerful that way as well. You know, I've heard this saying growing up. Maybe you've heard it too. It goes a little something like this. You can finish it if you know it. Sticks and stones may break your bones, but that is the dumbest saying ever, isn't it? Everybody, come on. That is just the worst. Doesn't make any sense at all because I can remember breaking my collarbone as a kid. We were playing this game called Smear the... Somebody knew the name of that word. And... and, uh, I was it. I was the blank, you know, because I got got. And I remember, I'll tell you what I remember more. I remember the ridicule more than I remember breaking my collarbone. 
I can remember the pain of what I experienced uh, with the words and, and what somebody said about me much more than I've, I've broken bones, I've lost a digit, I've, I've, I've hurt myself lots of different ways, but the words that have been spoken over me have a tendency to last a lot longer. Proverbs 18.21 says, The tongue has the power of life and death. The tongue has the power of life and death. That's true, isn't it? That's true. Some things have been spoken over us that we just remember just into our, into our souls, and it's just embedded in there. That's called a label. We've been labeled growing up. We've been labeled maybe even in your adulthood, but it's just haunted you. It's been stuck with you for so long. It's stuck with you for so long. I'm going to tell you why this is the case. Do you guys hear my voice echoing? Is that just me? Oh, okay, cool, because I must have had way too much coffee today. Very good. Anthony, can you turn off the in-ear monitors because I think they're on in here, and it's like humming in my ear. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate you. Let me tell you why words have such a powerful impact in our lives. It's because we are created in the image of God. Did you know this? We're created in the image of God, and God created the heavens and the earth and all of the world and everything that, that's ever happened. He created with his words. Isn't that true? Yeah. Yes, he created, he created all those things with words. And guess what? We were created in his image. Yes. We were created in his image. So guess what? Our words have power too. So when I speak over someone else, when I talk to my kids, when I'm speaking to my wife, those words have power. Those words are, are, are sending out into, the, into the, the airwaves and actually have the power to create, destroy, empower, discourage, all the different things. If you have a tendency to believe something that you've heard over and over and over again. I, I heard something growing up over and over and over again because I had, I had a certain kind of mom. She was so good. Oh my God, my mom's so good. I'm going to bring some of my mom's goodness into today's message and I'm going to lend it to you if you need it. My mom would say something like this to me every so often, pretty, pretty often actually. It went just like this. You are gifted. Elliot, you're gifted. You're so gifted, and you know what? You can do anything you put your mind to. You can do anything you put your mind to. And hearing that, I had a tendency to just believe it. To over and over again, I was hearing it, believing it, just soaking in, and I just absolutely loved it. Without my mom's word, I, I just think that it would be a lot more difficult to do what I'm doing now. Here I am, speaking life over people, trying to anyways, and, and walking into a calling that's much bigger than me, and because my mom spoke that way to me, I walked into it so much more readily. I walked into it so much more easily. And it would have been a lot more difficult to walk into this calling if I had heard things like, you're a loser. You're worthless. You're pathetic. You're good for nothing. You know, you're, you're a little much. You've, you've always been a drug addict. You're always this big. You know, if I've heard that growing up over and over again, it would be a lot harder. Not impossible, by the way. Really important to say. Not impossible. So if you grew up that way, hearing things like that, not impossible to walk into a really great calling. But it's a lot easier now that I'm, I've been hearing that my whole life. I walked into my Christianity, and pastors and leaders started telling me, no, you can do this. you got this calling. You can do it. Because I, there was a seed planted in there that I believed it. I believed that I, I was capable of doing all things through Christ because I had grown up hearing things like that. So what I want to talk to you about is this. Many people struggle in the present because of labels from their past, and that's a really sad story. I see it all the time. I see it as a pastor, and I'm meeting new people, and people are coming into the church, and I go and do Bible studies, and I do different things. I just realize that so many people are struggling so much in the present because of the labels that have been put on them in the past. It's devastating. It's really sad, and I, I look at people with fresh eyes. I, I look at people, I, I hope with God's eyes to see the goodness, to see that God has something special for them. But all that some people can see is what they've been sp what's been spoken over them, the label that's been on them. You know, maybe someone said something about you that it still makes you feel small to this day. There's still something, there's something that was said about you as a kid or maybe you were growing up and it, it still sticks in there. It's, you can remember it. You can feel it. Maybe you did something and you can't shake the guilt and shame that that's left you with. If that's the case, go back and listen to Tiffany's message last week. It was so good on that topic of guilt and shame, wasn't it? Come on, church. It was so good last week. Maybe there's something that you heard on the outside 
that you've taken on and, and just internalized, and now it's on the inside of you. Someone said something on the outside, and you've internalized it, and now it's on the inside. That's a label, and that's what we want to change today. We want to change some labels. You've, you've, you've been given some labels that are not true, lazy, insecure, too sensitive. You, you're bad with relationships. Your family's dysfunctional. You know, you're just average. You're a hothead. You're annoying. You're a bit much. Your family's broken. Those labels have been spoken over you, and you've internalized them. Now, I have to say something that's not quite the most encouraging thing, but I have to say this. Some of these labels come because there's a hint of truth to them. There's a hint of truth there. But I want to tell you the difference between something you have a tendency towards and a label that belongs on your life. There's a big difference between those two things. Maybe you do have a tendency to let your anger go a little bit. Maybe you have a tendency to, to not be so motivated, but that does not make you lazy forever, and it doesn't make you a hothead permanently. Listen to this. Write this in your notes, if you would, please. What's true about you now doesn't have to be true about you forever. What's true about you now doesn't have to be true about you forever. God's power is bigger than your past. If you have a negative label, you can change it. You can name it something different. If a label has been put on your life that is not true, that is inaccurate, it's from the devil, it's from the enemy, you can choose to change that label once and for all and say, no, that's not my name, that's not my identity. God has made me new, he's made me special, and he's actually doing something brand new in me right now. That's not my name. Everybody say this with me. That's not my name. That's not my name. There's labels that have been spoke over you that don't belong there. They don't belong there. We're going to change that today. I got a story for you. Uh, it's out of Genesis 35, and it's about a guy named Jacob. Maybe you haven't heard of Jacob, but it's, uh, it, this might ring a bell. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the third in a list of three names that you hear over and over again out of the book of Genesis. And it goes a little something like this. Jacob was on his own, striking out on his own, becoming a man, and he runs into a girl named Rachel. Ooh, la, la. Rachel, she was... She was a pretty little thing, okay? Because the, the Bible talks about that. Not just, like, I, there's no pictures in the Bible, all right? I'm just like, I'm going off what it said, okay? Just Rachel, she was, she was smoking. She was smoking. So the Bible says this, and the, and the Bible's tough sometimes, man. It's just so raw. It's a little too raw for me sometimes. This is what the Bible said, because Rachel had a sister too. And um, let's just, how, how am I going to put this just sensitively? Um, Jacob comes in, sees the two girls. He saw, and the Bible, this is what the Bible says about Rachel. Rachel had a lovely figure and was beautiful. Leah, Leah had weak eyes. <laughs> oh, dang, dude. That's, that's tough, man. That is tough. That's like the, the Bible is so hardcore sometimes. You know, Rachel, she was gorgeous. And Leah, you know, well, she wore glasses. And every girl with glasses in the house is like, what is that supposed to mean? I, I, a lot of guys like girls with glasses, so don't worry about that, okay? Just chill. Chill for a second, but weak eyes. Like, I don't know. Like, another way to say it in today's vernacular would be like, man, Rachel, she looks so good. And, and Leah, she had, she had a great personality. She had a really, she was funny. Funny. <laughs> she was funny. Oh, man. Uh, it's just really, really a sad deal uh, for Leah. But this is what happened. Uh, so uh, Jacob goes striking out on his own. He meets Rachel, uh, meets Rachel, wants to marry her. So he asks Laban, hey, can I, marry, can I marry your daughter, Rachel? She's really beautiful. I love her very much, and I want to marry her. Sure, you can marry her. Seven years. You have to work for me for seven years, and then I'll let you marry my daughter. I'll let you marry my daughter. And so he said, absolutely, I love her. I want to spend the rest of my life with her, so let's do this. And then uh, the seven years goes by, and the Bible, dude, is so crazy sometimes. This is what happens. This is the actual story of what happened. It's their wedding night. Is this a, is this a house of grown-ups right here? Okay, it's their wedding night. So you know what, you know what time it is, right? And uh, it's, it's th that time is coming up, but it's dark, you know, so they don't have electricity. So like the candles were there and they, they took, turned out the candles, it's dark. And Rachel's dad takes his funny daughter and throws her in the tent. It does the switcheroo, does the absolute switcheroo. So now Jacob has consummated his marriage with Leah, the wrong girl. So he wakes up in the morning. He's like, wait a second. This is not what I worked seven years for. And the dad says, oh, you know, I had to marry off my funny daughter first. I'm so sorry. 
I keep on saying funny. Is that funny? I'm not sure if it is or not. Some of the ladies are in here going like, dude, move on. Move on, bro. Move on. Okay, I'm moving on right now. He says, you, wanna, you want my, my good-looking daughter, Rachel? Then, then you're going to have to work for another seven years. He says, absolutely no problem. I'll do it. And they, they get married. They, they get together. So now it's Jacob and Rachel, 14 years of work. It's crazy. Now, this is, this is how it goes. They want a big family. Back in those days, you wanted to have a big family because that's just what you do. You have a lot of sons. That means you got a lot of employees, basically. It's a good deal. And that's what it was. You wanted a big family. That was like your honor. That was, that was a good thing. So they, they had one son, and that was fine, but then they wanted to have more. They wanted to have more sons. And so this is where the story gets really sad because they wanted a second son, but then they had difficulty with that. They didn't have emergency C-sections back then. And I'm going to read this story to you, but, but Rachel was going to pass away in this story. It goes like this, Genesis 35, starting in verse 16. Rachel began to give birth and had great difficulty. As she was having great difficulty in childbirth, the midwife said to her, don't despair, for you have another son. As she breathed her last, for she was dying, she named her son Ben-Oni. But his father named him Benjamin. Listen, Rachel named her son one thing, but the father named the son something else. This is a story that illustrates very clearly, and I'm going to explain it as we go, how we can change a, a negative situation, a bad label, into something better. Names are important. They have meaning, you know. Um, before I get into some of these, these, these things right here, you know, our, our generation today, not the old generation, this generation right here, right now, very creative when it comes to names. I, I, I just wanted to share some of these funnier names with you because these, these names that people are coming out with, I just can't believe them half the time. Let me give you a start with some boy names because they're like on the tamer side. How about these boy names? Let's start with this one, Arrow. I'm going to name my son Arrow. Man, somebody's really into archery, going to name their son Arrow. He said, Arrow in my quiver. I don't know what's up with that. How about this one, Bobo? You name your son Bobo? These are real names. These are real boy names that people do. And if you are named Bobo, I'm so sorry. I do not mean to insult your name. Online, if you know someone named Bobo, please tag them. I have to see this. I have to see it. How about Miggy? Miggy. This is a real name. I, I looked these up. These are, how about Miggy? How about this is my probably favorite boy name, Turgle. What? Turgle. Yeah, it's real. This is Turgle. Turgle. Turgle the turtle? I don't know. Turgle uh, is funny. But how about this one? How about labels right here? Blade. Blade, gonna name my boy Blade. Boy, you're gonna be a gang leader one day. I believe in you, Blade, right there on the forearm. And I'm just gonna like, okay. The girl ones are really good too. Uh, these girl names that I, um, I just looked at, they're absolutely crazy. Fruity, gonna name my little girl Fruity. Yeah, Fruity, Fruity, Fruity. Um, fruity, got it. Now, this next one, um, I don't really, I, I wanna just go ahead and put it on the screen. I don't really wanna say it out loud. Um, well, how does it go? How does it go? Uh, Dr. No, I don't want to say it because I feel like I'm going to say it wrong. Dursty, I'll, I focus on the doctor and then I like, I'm going to cuss in church. I don't want to do that. Um, how about this next one? Um, Messiah, no pressure, little girl. Messiah, that's your name, Messiah. No mistakes allowed. And this next one, this next one, go ahead, put that one up. la 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 But I, I, was, I was saying it to myself, la That's not how you say it. That's not how you say it at all. You know how to say it? Say it with me. Ladasha. Man, we're going to switch over to symbols. Let's go. I'm going to name my next daughter L L something with a symbol, like a star. Like, is her name going to be star, but it's just going to be like a, one of those asterisks. <laughs> That's her name. She got Man, our, 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 our generation is very creative with names, but you know, names have meaning. And so when we get back to our text right here and see what Rachel was doing with her son makes a big difference. Genesis 35, 18 says this, as Rachel breathed her last, for she was dying, she named her son Ben-Oni. But his father named him Benjamin. Now, Ben-Oni means, Ben means son, Oni means sorrow. So Rachel named her son Son of sorrow. Your life is sorry. You are son of my sorrow. This is sorrowful. Your life. She put a label on him, and this is very understandable. I don't blame her one bit. Honestly, she's holding this baby in her arms, giving him a name. She knows she's going to die. She's never going to see him take his first steps. She's never going to be able to breastfeed him. She's never going to be able to, see, to, to talk him through his first girlfriend. This is sad. She is desperate. She's this is, this is the son of her sorrow. But you know who else was sad? Probably Jacob. Jacob was sad too. He worked for this woman for 14 years. This is his ride or die, her, his best friend. 
He loved her, but he chose a different label for that child. The father took what was and called it something different. If you don't like your label, you can change it. If the enemy labels you, you can relabel yourself. If you think you're ruined, God says you are resilient. It's up to you to decide what label you're going to take on. You look at the season of life that you're in and say, oh, this is my, my worst season. This is terrible. Things aren't going right. Well, you need to change your words, change your mindset to say, no, God can do anything he wants in this season. He can use this to build me up. He can use this season to set me back, put my feet on stall solid ground. I, it's up to me to choose how I'm going to respond in this season. This is important for anybody who's struggling in a season of life right now, because Jacob had an experience of renaming. Back in Genesis 32, just a few chapters before, Jacob knew that he didn't have to rest in the name that had been given. Watch this. His, his name is Jacob, right? Which means deceiver. He was given that name obviously at birth, because he actually had a brother named Esau. He was a twin, and he grabbed onto his ankle, and as soon as he came out, they saw that he was trying to come out first and be the firstborn, but he wasn't. And so as he came out, they labeled him, you're a deceiver. Jacob, that, that boy is a deceiver. He's going to try and manipulate and get his way and try and get out first and whatever. They labeled him deceiver. And see, what happened in Genesis 32 was this, is that he got into a wrestling match. Jacob got into a wrestling match with an angelic being. Many people say this was Jesus in the flesh. We don't really know. It's just all we know is a spiritual being met him, and he got into like this wrestling match with him, and he was asking for a blessing. Jacob was like, bless me, bless me. I'm not going to let go of you until you give me a blessing, which is a whole nother picture of how we can try to hold on to God, try and reach out for God, and, and pursue and persist the presence of God even if it is for something that we need in our lives. And so this angelic being said, what's your name? And Jacob said, my name's Jacob, deceiver. And, and the angelic being said, no, that's not your name anymore. Now your name is Israel, as in the nation of Israel, as in the people of Israel, as in the country, Israel, as in the Israel that you and I understand as the nation of Israel. That's what, they changed. That's what the angelic being changed his name to. So Jacob knew what it was to be seen, looked at, look at himself as a deceiver, but God says, no, that's not your name anymore. That's not who you are anymore. Some of you are looking at yourself a certain way. You're looking at yourself like, oh, I'm an addict. I'm a cheater. I'm a liar. I'm a manipulator. I'm, I'm a screw up. I'm going to keep on going through this over and over again. God says, that's not your name. That's not what I'm calling you anymore. If you pursue me and wrestle with God and pursue him and don't let go and keep on doing the right thing, keep on pressing into him, keep on chasing God and the right things, God says, I'm, I can change your label. I can change your name. I can move you from where you're at into the place that you want to be and greater places than you can even believe in. Jacob did never thought that his name would become Israel and that he, his name would be synonymous with the whole nation, but it was. So what does that mean for us? It means a great deal for us. Jacob knew what to do in this situation. He knew that even though this is a sad time, that my son is being born, but my wife, my, the love of my life, the one I worked 14 years just to marry these days, guys will barely even get down on one knee anymore. <laughs> no, they do. They do. But Jacob worked really hard for this wife. He worked really, really, really hard. And so losing her was a big a big blow, but he said, no, nope, I'm not going to call. I'm not going to call him son of my sorrow. I'm going to name him Benjamin, which means son of my right hand, son of, my right, son of power, son of blessing, son of inheritance. This, is, this son of mine is going to be named Benjamin, which means son of my right hand, my power. He took that label and changed it. Based on his experience, the right hand symbolized blessing. What other people are going to call a curse, what everyone in the, my whole camp is looking at, man, this bad thing is going on. No, it's not a bad thing. This is son of my blessing, and God can take this situation and turn it into something wonderful. What the enemy meant for harm, Jacob said, I will find the good. You think I'm at my worst? This is where I begin to transform. You say that I'm broken. I'm saying I'm becoming who God designed me to be. We don't get to choose what comes into our life, but we get to choose what we call it. 
Maybe you're facing a sickness right now. Maybe you're facing an illness. Maybe you're facing a season of life which seems totally unsure. You have no idea where to go, what to do. You're having family troubles. I I really can't name all the things that you might be going through, but maybe you're going through something crazy. You don't get to choose what comes your way, but you get to choose how you respond to it and what you call it. This is the season where I'm growing. This is the season where I'm, I'm growing into who God called me to be. This may look like son of my sorrow, but this is the son of my right hand. Is there a label you don't like? We'll call it something different. Remember, God's power is bigger than your past. God's power is bigger than your past. When Tiff and I first started here, um, I was 27 years old, Tiffany's 24, and we were brand new pastors. We'd never been pastors anywhere else before. I had never really led very much before. I don't know why they chose us to do much other than Tiffany. Tiffany was chosen rightly. She was very well, very well. Not me, though, not me. I was, I was totally insecure. I'd only been coming to church for three years. I'd only been saved for five, and I, I was, of course, an, a drug addict. I've told you this many, many times. My life is an open book, and I've you know, had trouble with the law and was a pretty severe drug addict, went through all of that. And so when I walked into that calling and I was invited into that, I came in with some labels on me. I was, I was very insecure. I was, I I knew myself as a, as an addict, as a liar, as a cheat. And I thought those things are going to be a hindrance. Those things are going to be a liability. Those things are going to keep me from being all that I can possibly be for this community and everything that I want to do for others. Little did I know that my past and that turmoil would actually become my strength. And now I'm able to help people in a way that people that haven't been through what I've been through, I'm able to help them in a totally different way. What I didn't realize then, what I know now, is that God can use even your tough times and use them to bless others. God can take anything that you're going through right now and transform it into now you can be a blessing to others. It happened exactly like that to me. Things, was, things were terrible. But God can use all things to work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And that is not just New Testament. That is Je- first book of your Bible, Genesis. That's exactly what Jacob is, he, he did with his own son. My past is now my strength. I can now relate to people where they are in a, in a totally different way that I never would have been able to because little did I know I was never intended to be normal, and I don't think any of us were. We're not intended to be normal. A lot of us, we, we compare ourselves to others. Oh, well, you know, somebody else ought to do that. Somebody else ought to, somebody ought to try and make a difference. I can't because, you know, I'm, I'm divorced or I, I have brokenness or I, you know, come from a broken family or I had some... God can use you. God loves to use people who have a little bit of brokenness because in our weakness, God gets stronger. In our weakness, God gets to shine even more because when, I, when someone like me succeeds and does well, I don't get the credit because I'm obviously not good enough to do anything of, of worth, but God says, oh, now I can shine through them. And that's what I want to tell you. You can change this. You need to change your mindset. You need to change the label that maybe you've put over yourself. What the enemy thought would stop you is actually going to be the strength for you. You have no idea how God can transform a situation. He absolutely can. If you don't like what you've been called, you need to name it something different. If you've been called insecure, you need to start calling yourself, I am confident in Christ. If you've been called lazy, you need to say, no, 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 that's not me. I am motivated by my calling. God has called me. If you've been labeled miserable and, and kind of downcast, no, the joy of the Lord is my strength. You need to label yourself differently. You are not undependable. You are not a cheater. You are not a loser. You are not a failure. You are forgiven. You are transformed. You are made new. You are healed. You are loved. You are an overcomer by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. Change the label. Change the label. You need, to, you need to cast off that old label and bring in the new label that God has for you. In a tough season, call it your growth season. This is the season that, that I'm being changed into the image of Christ. If you're in a season where you feel so alone right now, call it this is the season where I'm drawing closer to Christ than I've ever been before. I feel so alone, but this is the season where I'm actually learning how to get closer to God and get closer to Him that this is the season where I'm becoming stronger. If, you've, if you're going through a season of failure, 
Call it the season where you learned so much. You learned so much in the midst of all of that. You don't get to choose what comes in. You get to choose what you call it. What's true about you now does not have to be true about you forever. Because you have an enemy who hates you. That's bad news. You have an enemy who hates you. you have an, uh, God has an enemy. His name the devil. And there's a, he's an enemy to your soul. And the reason why he hates you is because he hates God. And he wants to hurt who God loves. And God loves you. You're his child. He cares about you. So this is what happened. God sent his son Jesus to die on a cross for our sin so that we could be made new. And so that the enemy, when the, when the enemy tries to label us, tries to tear us down, it's because that you have an enemy that hates you and is trying to get in the way of what God wants to do in your life. I just wonder, is there anyone here who needs to walk into something new, who needs to walk into a new season, someone who needs to walk into a, a, a new label, a new label? If that's you today, I would just encourage you. Receive this message with an open heart and take the opportunity to, to walk into what God has for you. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes with me. Father, I just ask right now for every single person who's here to just be open and receptive to hear this very powerful message that we don't have to live in the situation we've been given. Lord, you are good and you desire for us to be made new in you and to begin to see ourselves differently than we've ever seen ourselves before. God, I ask for every single person here to just see in, in their mind the label that's been put on them. Maybe it's a label that they put on themselves. Maybe it's a label that they grew up hearing. Maybe it's even much more recently than that. But Lord, I pray that they would see that label right now. And Lord, I ask that they would begin to see what you're trying to replace it with. They are not ruined. These folks are not, they're not selfish. They're not damaged goods. Lord, in you, they are made new, they are made whole, made righteous. So if there's anyone here that just needs to receive that today, that needs to receive a new label, and the, the first label I want to talk about is just being a Christ follower, saying, hey, you know, I, I've been around church a little bit, and you, maybe you've even walked with him before, but something happened along the way where you became distant, and you, 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 you separated yourself, because God didn't move. You moved, though. You moved away from him. God is waiting for you to come back to him. He's been waiting for you to, to take this step, to be here today, to receive his love, to receive his new label, to receive what you've prepared for them. And this, this moment has been ordained. And if you're ready to receive that new label of a, of a Christ follower to say, I am, I'm going to walk in Christ and I am going to follow him. I'm going to make him my savior, but I'm also going to make him my Lord. I'm going to live his way and I'm going to take steps after him. If that's you today, with heads down, eyes closed, just a private moment, just lift your hand with me and say, that's me. I, I want to I be made new in him. Amen. I see you and you and you and you and you. Hallelujah. I want to say, even though I see you, God sees you first and foremost. So church, can we just pray together as a family? If, you, if you're ready to make this prayer, let's just say it all together. Say, Father God, I give you my heart. I give you my life. I ask that you would fill me with your Holy Spirit and forgive me of all my sins. Make me new and show me the path that I should walk. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we celebrate with everyone who made that decision today? Come on, come on, come on. Let's actually celebrate for them. Let's go. Amen.